in this video we are going to study about the mammary gland or the breast the mammary gland is present bilaterally in the pectoral region of both sexes in male and immature female the mammary glands are rudimentary in both the nipple is small but the areola is fully formed after puberty the female breast or well develop and this becomes more marked during pregnancy and lactation the shape varies in adult female which may be hemispherical conical or pendulous but its circular base remains fairly constant the mammary gland is a modified sweat gland it lies in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region and it has no distinct fibrous capsule so when you see the extent of the female adult mammary gland the circular base so this is the base which is circular and it extends vertically from the second rib to the sixth rib in the mid clavicular line the extent of the base is from the second rib to the sixth rib in the mid clavicular line horizontally it extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line along the fourth rib so this is the extent of the circular base next we'll see the mammary bed the base of the gland rest upon the following structure the pectoralis major in the medial 2/3 serratus anterior in the lateral 1/3 and the external oblique aponeurosis in the inframedial quadrant it separates the mammary gland from the rectus abdominis muscle deep projections from the glandular parenchyma sometimes penetrate the superficial part of the pectoralis major muscle next we'll see the retro mammary space this contains loose connective tissue which intervenes between the base of the gland and the deep fascia covering the structures of the mammary bed as a result the normal breast can be moved freely over the pectoralis major in invasion of the breast carcinoma the gland is fixed to the pectoralis major muscle next we'll see about the axillary tail of axillary tail of spence sometimes a tail like projection from the upper and outer quadrant of the gland enters the axilla through an opening of the axillary fascia which is known as the foramen of langer and this process comes in contact with the anterior group of axillary lymph node and when enlarged may be mistaken for a lipoma so this is a diagrammatic representation this is the extension from the upper outer quadrant of the gland and this is called as the axillary tail of spence and it enters the axilla through an opening in the axillary fascia so this is the foramen of langer next we'll see about the symmetry of the mammary gland the mammary gland of both sides are more often equal in size if one is larger and lower and it is usually the right side breast next we'll see the features in the skin overlying the mammary gland first feature is the nipple so the nipple is a conical or cylindrical projection below the center of the mammary gland at the level of fourth intercostal space in nulliparous female the nipple is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous duct and contains circular and longitudinally disposed smooth muscle 
the circular muscle erects the nipple for suckling and the longitudinal muscle retracts the nipple it possesses a rich nerve supply and is provided with the sensory receptors for suckling here you can see these are the lactiferous duct so the nipple is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous duct next we'll see about the areola the areola is the pigmented circular area of the skin around the base of the nipple the pigmentation is irreversibly darkened after first pregnancy the outer margin of the areola contain numerous modified sebaceous gland which are enlarged during pregnancy and lactation and these are known as the tubercles of montgomery tubercles of mont go mary oily secretions of these gland provide protective lubricant during lactation besides these glands the areola contains sweat gland and accessory mammary gland the skin of the areola and the nipple is devoid of hair and subcutaneous fat beneath the areola each lactiferous duct is dilated to form the lactiferous sinus before passing through the nipple a sub areolar lymphatic plexus of sapi collects the lymph from the areola and the nipple so here you can see the dilated lactiferous duct that is called as the lactiferous sinus and this is the sub areolar plexus of sapi which is a lymphatic plexus which collects the lymph from the areola and the nipple so this is a diagrammatic representation so here you can see these are the features over the skin over the mammary gland so this is the nipple which is a conical projection and this is the areola which is a circular pigmented area around the base of the nipple and here you can see in the periphery which are enlarged modified sebaceous gland during pregnancy and lactation and these are called as the tubercles of montgomery and here you can see the nipple is pierced by the lymph lactiferous duct and lactiferous duct before its opening it gets dilated which is known as the lactiferous sinus and this is the sagittal section here you can see the lactiferous sinus very well and these are the opening of the lactiferous ducts into the nipple and this is the retro mammary space the space between the mammary gland and the mammary bed the retro mammary space in males the mammary gland composed of duct system without alveoli so these are the alveoli so this is absent in male breast and it is supported by fibro fatty tissue so these are the fatty tissue and these are the fibrous tissue so the, the breast is supported by fibro fatty tissue so in male the alveoli is absent and you have the fibro fatty tissue the breast tissue does not extend beyond the margin of the areola abnormal and bilateral hypertrophy of the male breast is known as the gynecomastia and they are occasionally observed in the klinefelter syndrome that is 47 xxy chromosome syndrome and it is also observed in the endocrine disorders or impaired liver function the male breast or richly drained by lymphatics the prognosis of the breast carcinoma of male is worse than that of a female 